Hey guys, David here from Google 55 Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be starting a new video series which is going to be showing you guys how to program in C Sharp. Okay, so let's get started. So like I said, basically I'm going to be starting a new video series which is going to be showing you guys how to program in C Sharp yourself. So basically this video series is going to have a number of tutorials and each new tutorial will be on something a bit more advanced than the last one and will basically be building off of what we already know. So anyways, for tutorial one, I'm just going to start off with the very basics of C Sharp. I'm going to assume that you have no prior programming experience. However, if you do, you can probably skip most of this video because I'm just basically going over the basics of programming. However, you might still want to watch the syntax part because even though you might have prior programming experience, the syntax of C sharp might be different from the language you know. So anyways, without further ado, let's get started. So basically in tutorial one, I'm going to just be talking about forms, events, objects, properties, and the syntax of C sharp. So what I have open here is Microsoft Visual Studio Express 2013. And if you don't have it already, you can go ahead and download it from the link in the description below. Anyway, so once it's opened up, whenever you want to start a new project, all you have to do is hit file new project, and you're going to get this window here. Now by default it selects Visual Basic, which is great if you want to make a Visual Basic application. However, we want to program in C Sharp, so you're going to want to go over here, hit C Sharp, and you're going to select C Sharp Windows Forms application. Now 99% of the time this is the one that you're going to want to select. For this tutorial series I'm always going to be selecting this. However, once you get advanced enough, you can probably move on to WPF applications, console applications, and class libraries. But for the purpose of these tutorials, I'm just going to be sticking with the Windows Forms application because that's what we use most often. So once you've selected your Windows Forms application, all you have to do is name it, and you can select where to save it. And once you're done, just hit OK. Now by default, it adds new form to the project. And this is what a form is here. So basically, it's the window in which everything is going to be contained. So forms, just think of them as windows because that's really all that they are. So that's what a form is. So now let's move on to properties and events. So if I go over here in the bottom right corner, you can see that we have our properties window. Now by default, it is selected to properties. So these are all the properties of the form that I can change. So for example, if I want to change the text of the form, all I have to do is change the text property. So I'll just name this form tutorial. Okay. And you can see here that you have a number of properties that you can change. Now this is the same for every single object and every single form that you are going to be putting in your project. I just want to also point out the name property. The name property is basically what's going to help you organize your project later on. Basically what you want to do with all objects, and a form is technically an object, you want to give it a three letter prefix for its name and then something describing what it is. So the three letter prefix for form is usually FRM, so I'm going to name it FRM and I'll just say that this is the tutorial form. Now the very first thing that you should always do when you add a new object to your project is change the name. This will just help things from getting confusing. Like I said, it's the three letter prefix of your choice, just as long as it makes sense, you should be fine, along with a name that sort of describes what it is. Anyway, so let's talk about objects. Now over here in the left side, I have my toolbox here. This is basically where all my objects are stored. So objects are things such as buttons, checkboxes, text boxes, group boxes, list boxes, progress bars, radio buttons, you have all those things and those are all objects which can be found in the toolbox on the left side. So for the purpose of this tutorial I'm just going to add a button which can be done by either clicking and dragging or just double clicking on the object and I'm also just going to be adding a label. You can see that I have the two new objects on my form now. Now like I said you always want to rename your objects. So now the label here I'm going to rename it to LBL tutorial text and the button I'm just going to rename it to btn change. So basically for this tutorial what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be changing the text in the label when this button is clicked. So that was the name of the button. Now let's say I want to change the text of the button here. Like I said your properties you can just change the text property and I'll make it change and you can see that the button now says change. Now let's also just play around with a few other properties here just to get you familiar with the properties of an object. So I have back color property. I can basically change the background color of the button. So let's make it red. And I also have four color which changes the text color of the button. And I have a whole lot of other properties here which we're not going to worry about for now. 
Like I said, all objects have properties. So again, I can change some properties in the label if I'd like. So let's make that one a white text on a blue back color. And you can see it is updated over here. Okay, so now let's talk about events. So every object has events that can be associated with it. To access these events, all you have to do is click on the object once. And over here under properties, you can just hit this lightning bolt. Keep in mind that the form also has events, since it technically is also an object. Anyway, so these are all the events that I can have for the button. So basically what an event is, is it's saying when this happens, do this. So by default for the button, it selects the click event. However, you can also have a whole bunch of other events here, such as control added, drag and drop, drag enter, four color changed, key down, key press. So basically all these are saying if this happens, do this. So now to access the code for this event, all you have to do is double click on the event. So since I just double clicked on click, I'm basically saying when the button is clicked, do this. And this is where you write the code that you want it to do when the button is clicked. Just before we get into the actual code, I also just want to point out that each and every object has a default event that can be accessed by double clicking on the object. So for example, let's say I want to double click on label here. It'll automatically go ahead and create the click event in my code for the label because that's its default event. However, if I don't want the click event and I want something else as my event, that's when you need to come over here, hit the lightning bolt, and find the event that you want. Anyway, so back to the button click event. So basically now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting into the syntax of C sharp. So basically you can see a lot of curly brackets here. So these curly brackets are basically the containers for your code. All of your code needs to be between these curly brackets because these curly brackets basically say, this is where the event starts and this is also where the event ends. If your code isn't in between those curly brackets, your program will not work properly. And most of the time it won't even allow you to put the code. So always make sure that all of your code is in between curly brackets. Every line of code also has to end in a semicolon. So basically what I'm going to be demonstrating now is how to write your code. So basically what I'm going to be doing is when I click on the button, I want it to change the label text to say hello world. So right now I'm in my change button click event as you can see between the curly bracket. Basically the syntax of C sharp is object dot property equals something. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be changing the label text to say hello world. So in order to do that, we need the object name. So I'm going to go LBL tutorial text. And like I said, that's why you want to name your objects because it makes it a lot easier to code with. If I was to have a bunch of labels and each label was named label one, label two, label three, label four, it would get really confusing. So that's why you want to name all your objects. Anyway, so once you have your object, you can just hit dot, find your property. So in this case, text, space equals space, and then in between quotation marks, you always use quotation marks when you're dealing with text. Hello, world. And like I said, every single line of code in C Sharp needs to finish with a semicolon. So let's go ahead and put that. And as you can see, there are no red lines under it telling us that something is wrong. Just for a second here, I removed the very last quotation marker here. And you can see that it underlines it in red. Basically, if the program detects a flaw in your code, it'll underline it in red. And you can hover over it to basically see why it's underlined in red. So here it's saying new line and constant. So basically it's just telling us here that we haven't finished off our code and that's because it's seeing the semicolon as text since I didn't close off the quotation marks. So I'll just re-add that quotation mark there. So it's okay if you don't really understand what this code is doing at this point. I'm definitely going to be going more in depth in later tutorials. However, basically what this code is doing is I have it in the button change click event. So I'm saying when the button is clicked, change the object label tutorial text, change its text property to hello world. Now, once you want to debug or run your program, all you have to do is hit start up here and you can see it is running our program now. So now if I hit the change button, you can see here that it changes the label text to say hello world. All you have to do to stop is just close the form if you only have one form or you can hit the stop button. So anyways, that's it for tutorial one, and I hope that I was able to help you a bit in starting off your programming in C Sharp. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments box below. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when the next tutorial is out, where I'm going to be going a bit more in depth into buttons and labels. And also don't forget to check out my Facebook and Twitter page. Also don't forget to check out my website at www.gogudif5techtutorials.com. All the links are in the description below.